Hello students. Today we shall start with the chapter work energy and power and we'll start with the definition of work done. It is a simplistic definition that we start with and we'll be refining this definition as we move toward more towards more complex situations. So this is the most simple definition that we have for work done. It's it says that work is said to be done when a force creates a displacement in a body on which the force acts. In fact, work is defined by a force. Work is done by a force when a force acts on a body and creates a displacement in it. So for example, as you can see here in this figure, there is this block B which let's say moves under the effect of this force. This force F acts on the block and it creates a displacement in the same direction as that of the force so that the block in a certain time reaches uh, the new position here and in the process it undergoes a displacement S. So mathematically in that case the work done by the force F will simply be the product of the force with the displacement F into S. See here that this is a very specific case where the force and displacement are in the same direction right and it is only in that case that we can write the work to be equal to the product of simply the force and the displacement their magnitudes. Now what happens if the force is not in the direction of displacement let us say for this figure that we have next. When the force is acting at an angle theta with the direction of displacement so here we see the same block it moves horizontally but it is under it is moving under the effect of a force which is not horizontal anymore it is acting at an angle theta with the displacement. In this case we say that the work done is given by the component of force in the direction of displacement I hope you understand this term F cos theta is nothing but the component of F in the direction of the displacement the horizontal component will be F cos theta and we multiply this F cos theta with the displacement S so as to get F S cos theta and I hope you can recognize from this relation that F S cos theta can also be written as F dot S it is the dot product of force with the displacement where we have now force and displacement in their vector form. Now understand that here itself we can write this in one more way instead of writing it as f cos theta times f it can also be written as f into s cos theta and s cos theta here would be the component of s in the direction of f. So if the same block undergoes the same displacement s and we try to find out s cos theta it will be the component of displacement in the direction of force which will be like this direction parallel to the force and you multiply that the, with the force. So in that case also we will get the same relation right f dot s itself but see that in both the forms the definition as such becomes a little different. Here you are calling the work done to be the component of f parallel to the displacement times the displacement which is f cos theta times s whereas in the second case you are writing the same work done as f into s cos theta which is nothing but the component of s parallel to f. So both these definitions for work are valid you have an option of choosing any one out of these two you either take the component of force in the direction of displacement and take the product of that with the displacement or you take the component of displacement in the direction of force and multiply that with the force to find out the work done the value of work will come out to be the same in both the cases. So in that sense we can say that the more basic formula is F s cos theta which will be F dot s the dot product of the force and the displacement vectors. So coming up to this definition then work done is F s cos theta which is F dot s understand that this definition is valid only when the force acting on the body is a constant. If the force changes with time then the expression will have to be modified which we shall see in the upcoming lectures. Apart from that the SI unit of work is same as that of energy as we shall see very soon how work and energy are very directly related to each other. Also work is a scalar quantity as you can understand this from the fact that work is given by the dot product 
of two quantities the force and displacement and dot product is always a scalar right. So, in that sense work is also a scalar quantity it has no direction associated with it. Next we talk about positive and negative work. So, we have already seen that when there is a force acting on a body and creates a displacement in the body the work done is simply given by work done by the force F is simply given by F into S. Since both these values are the magnitudes of course, we will get this value to be positive right. Force will have some value so this displacement will also have some value both will be positive numbers and when we multiply them we will get a positive value. On the other hand if we take up another force acting on the same block let us say there is some friction also acting on the block in the backward direction. The surface let us say is rough and it is creating some frictional force on the block. Under the effect of the external force F and the frictional force small f now the block is effectively still moving towards right. So, that the displacement is rightward. Now, do you understand that when we try to find out the work done by friction in this case it will be by the above definition that we have just talked about it will be given by the force of friction times the displacement times cos of the angle between the displacement and the frictional force which if we look at this figure now we understand that the angle between frictional force and the displacement will be 180 degrees and cos 180 we know is minus 1. So, we will get this value as negative F into S which will be a negative value. So, the work done by friction on this block as the block displaces in the forward direction in the direction of external force will be negative ok. So, from here we understand that work can be negative also. So, what is the significance of negative work? This we can understand if we relate work done by a force on a body with respect to the energy transfer that happens in the process of this work being done. We say that when a force is applied on a body and it does work on the body it essentially increases the energy of the body. It essentially provides some energy to the body so that the energy of the body increases. So, when the work done by a body by a force on a body is positive we say that the energy of the body increases the energy can be of various forms in this particular chapter we shall be talking about the kinetic energy associated with the body and we say that work done when work done is positive the kinetic energy of the body increases. On the other hand if the work done by a force on a body is negative that work will tend to take away energy from the body and the kinetic energy of the body would decrease. So, the negative work here basically implies that the work is being done. Um, like it is a negative work done that means the in the process of this work the energy of the body decreases. We can take, take up a very simple example over here. Let us say there is a, a ball which is dropped from a certain height towards the ground. We understand that as the ball moves down gravity works on it because, because of the mass of the ball there will be a gravitational pull acting on it in the downward direction. And as the ball moves down the displacement of the ball will also be in the downward direction. So, force into displacement the work done by gravitational force here will be positive because both the gravitational force as well as the displacement are in the same direction. And in the process of this ball moving down the kinetic energy of the ball increases we know this right as the ball falls down. This is because of positive work being done on the ball by the gravitational force. On the other hand when the same ball is thrown up from the ground with a certain initial velocity we understand that as the ball moves up it slows down it loses its kinetic energy which we can explain by considering the work done by gravity on the same ball as it moves up gravitational force is still acting downward whereas the displacement is in the upward direction. So, here in this case the work done by gravity is negative which results in the decrease in the kinetic energy of the ball and the ball slows down. We shall look at all these aspects in greater details in upcoming lectures. Now, work can also be 0. Let us just take an example for the same block on which there is an external force F, F acting and the block is moving in the direction of this force. If we try and find out the work done by the gravitational force acting on the block 
this is how gravitational pull is acting right so if we try to find out the work done by mg here the gravitational force can we say it will be the gravitational force mg times the displacement s times cos of the angle between the gravitational force and the displacement which in this case is 90 degrees do we see that the force mg and the displacement are exactly perpendicular to each other cos 90 we know is 0 so in this case the work done comes out to be 0 so for all those forces which are acting perpendicular to the displacement of the body the work done will always be 0 this involves the normal reaction in this case see that the normal reaction acting on the block will also do a zero work here because that is also perpendicular to the displacement right so work can take positive values it can take negative values it can also take zero value when force and displacement are perpendicular other than that work can be zero if no uh, if we go by the basic definition work done is force times displacement times cos of the angle between them we understand that if the force acting on a body is zero work can be zero yes if the displacement that the body has even if there is a force acting on a body but if the body is not displacing we understand that the work done in that case will be zero and other than that the third case that we have just now discussed when there is a force non-zero force and there is a non-zero displacement but they are acting in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other in that case also the work done will be zero now let us take up a few basic examples to understand work in a better way so here we have uh, a question in front of us which says that there is this 2 kg block and on which there are these forces acting there is a forward force of 20 newton acting and a frictional force of 10 newton in the backward direction other than that the mass of the block is given so we can find out the weight of the block as well as the normal reaction yes the block in a certain time undergoes a displacement of 1 meter and we are supposed to find out the work done by the external force the frictional force the gravitational force and the normal reaction all the four forces we have to find out the work due to all these four forces separately so let us do it one by one the first case work done by the external force by definition it is the force times the displacement times the angle between force and displacement which we see in this case is zero degrees the displacement is in the same direction as that of the force substituting the values we will get 20 into the displacement 1 times cos 0 which is also 1 so this gives us 20 joules as our answer second is work done by frictional force once again the frictional force times the displacement times cos of the angle between friction and displacement is 180 degrees they are acting opposite to each other so 10 newtons into 1 meter of displacement times cos of 180 which is minus 1 that gives us minus 10 joules work done by gravity the it will be equal to the gravitational force times the displacement times cos of angle between the gravitational force and the displacement which in this case is 90 degrees cos 90 is 0 so the work done will be 0 0 joules and same will be the case with normal reaction also because as we see normal reaction is also perpendicular to the displacement so the work done by it will also be zero simple so in all such cases when they are asking you to find out the work done by individual forces you can simply use the definition for work done and find all the four all the values next example is we have a block on which there is a force acting at an angle of 60 degrees the force is given to us and the surface on which the block is moving is smooth so there is no friction question says find the work done by the force f in the first second of the motion of the block so that means we have to assume that the block starts from rest its initial velocity is zero so force is given and displacement we have to find out but it is given to us that we are supposed to find out the work done during the first second of motion so we should be able to find out the displacement in this first second right and for that we will have to consider the motion of the block we will have to use a little bit of equations of motion here 
So, first thing is since we understand that it is only the horizontal component of this force the f cos theta component which will make this block move in the horizontal direction we can first find that out. So, f cos theta which in this case will be 20 cos 60 cos 60 we know is 1 by 2. So, this will come out to be 10 newtons with this, this 10 newton of forward force and with there being no friction in the backward direction we can simply say that the acceleration of this block will be the forward force which is f cos theta divided by the mass of the body which in this case will be 10 newton divided by 1 kg 1 meter per 10 meter per second squared. With an acceleration of 10 meter per second squared when the block starts from rest we can find out the distance that it travels in the first one second using the second equation of motion s is equal to u t plus half a t squared u here is 0. So, the first term goes to 0 plus half a is 10 t squared is 1 squared and this gives us the uh, distance travel to be 5 meters. Once we have got the displacement of the block in the first one second we can directly use the definition of work which is now force into the displacement into the cos of angle between the two which we know is 60 degrees force is 20 newtons displacement is 5 meters times cos 60 which is 1 by 2 this will come out to be 50 joules. One more example let us have the question says a force f given as 3 i cap plus 4 j cap acts on a particle and displaces it from a position r 1 which is i cap plus j cap plus k cap to vector r 2 which is 4 i cap plus 3 j cap plus k cap find the work done by the force f. So, here in this case in order to find out the displacement we first need to work with the two position vectors as you can see here in this figure if a particle is at a position p 1 initially having a position vector r 1 and it shifts to a new position p 2 having a position vector r 2 understand that this vector r 2 minus r 1 gives us the displacement vector for the particle yes. So, here in this case we define the displacement vector s as vector r 2 minus vector r 1 which when we no right in terms of the coordinates of the two points p 1 and p 2 will come up like this. And since all the values are given to us we have been given that r 1 the first position vector is i cap plus j cap plus k cap and vector r 2 the second position vector is 4 i cap plus 3 j cap plus k cap. We can use these values to find out the displacement vector see that here the displacement vector will come out to be x 2 minus x 1 which is 4 minus 1 i cap plus y 2 minus y 1 which is 3 minus 1 j cap plus z 2 minus z 1 which is 1 minus 1 k cap. So, as we solve this this becomes 3 i cap plus 2 j cap plus 0 k cap and this is our displacement vector. Now, coming back to the definition of work, work by definition is the dot product of force vector with the displacement vector. Both the vectors are now known to us in the rectangular form. So, we can just substitute the values force vector is 3 i cap plus 4 j cap taking this dot the, taking the dot product of this vector with the displacement vector which is 3 i cap plus 2 j cap and now we can just do the dot product dot product will be 3 times 3 plus 4 times 2 which is 9 plus 8 17 joules this will be the final answer.